Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pathan Court main handler Shahid Latif killed in Pakistan. Escalating Pakistan-Taliban tensions jeopardize Afghan immigrant survival. And UN echoes over enforced disappearance in Pakistan's Balochistan province. Let's begin the show. Pakistan is home to several wanted terrorists who are hiding under the patronage of security agencies, especially the inter-services intelligence. These terrorists who are responsible for orchestrating deadly terror attacks in neighboring India and other parts of the world are now targeted and killed in suspicion. Who is behind their killings and why are they being targeted? Let's find out. The terrorism that Pakistan has nurtured over time is now falling upon itself. As the recent killings of designated terrorists by unknown assailants on Pakistan's soil prove that the country still continues to shelter these dreaded terrorists. Noor Madina Mosque in Sialkot witnessed the death of Shahid Latif, a dreaded terrorist associated with jaish e mohammed terror outfit. Latif, who was shot dead by unknown gunmen, was the key handler of the terror attack over the Indian Air Force base in Pathan Court in 2016, in which nine security personnel lost their lives. Let's see what the Pakistani police say about the killing of Shahid Latif. Noor Masjid Mundi ki goraya, Thana Sadar Daska Zila Sial Court mein ye vaqe hai. Unknown gunmen aaye hain andar, unhone firing ki hai. Isko ham target killing bhi kya sakte hain aur terrorism to definitely isko ham treat karein. Isme Shahid Saab ki aur Saad Hashim Saab the unki intikal ho gaya. और तीसरे जो मजरूब हैं उनके इलाज जारी है अब्दुल अहद साहब की मौके से हमने जो अहम शवाहद हैं वो इकट्ठे किए हैं उन पर हम काम कर रहे हैं शाहिद साहब को सिक्योरिटी थ्रेट भी था उसके मुताबिक वो अपनी पोजिशन रखते थे और चीज़ों को जो है उसके मुताबिक देख रहे हैं तमाम इदारे इस वक्त साथ यहाँ पर इसकी तफ्तीश कर रहे हैं और इन शाह तम इसको जल्द जो है वो ट्रेस करेंगे बिलोंगिंग टू मो इन गुजरावाला इन पाकिस्तान Latif was arrested by Indian security agencies in Jammu and Kashmir in 1994 on terror charges. He was then put on trial and eventually jailed. He completed his sentence in 2010, after which he was deported to Pakistan via the Wagha border. Latif's killing is the latest in a series of attacks on terrorists in Pakistan. Recently, Mufti Qasir Farooq and Zizur Rahman of lashkar e taiba were killed in Karachi. In February, top Hezbollah commander Bashir Ahmed Peer was killed in Rawalpindi. There are several other terrorist operatives who have been killed in Pakistan in the last 18 months. Pakistan will never take action against terrorists. Uh, it will always speak with a fork tongue, but there is no real pressure on Pakistan to crack down on them either. So Pakistan will never crack down on them. You see, terror ecosystems are very frequently interlinked with uh, uh, organized crime. And we all know organized crime is extremely violent. One of the biggest funders of Pakistani-sponsored terrorism is the drug trade and illicit arms and uh, weapon smuggling. So, you know, these things, criminality is fundamentally very violent. So why is it surprising that these people are dropping dead? Because it is normal for criminals to go around killing each other, especially violent criminals in, involved in the drug trade. We all talk about, you know, the uh, Mexican drug cartels or the Colombian drug cartels. Uh, we fail to realize that, you know, uh, 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 most of these Pakistani organized uh, 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 terror groups are in fact the military wings of drug cartels themselves. Pakistan has been declared unsafe for foreigners by several countries due to the rise of extremist violence, kidnappings and blasts. Several terror outfits operate from Pakistani soil. They include Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan, Daesh, Lashkar-e Taiba, Jaish-e Mohammed and many more. 
Pakistan was put on a grey list by the Financial Action Task Force (FATF) for financing and sheltering these terrorists, but still it remains a breeding ground for terrorists. These terrorists not only target neighboring countries like India and Afghanistan, but they are frequently engaged in terror acts within Pakistan, which remains a cause of concern for peace in the country. Moving on, an already strained relationship between Pakistan and Afghanistan has taken a turn for the worse. Pakistan has taken a call to repatriate all undocumented immigrants back to their homeland. These Afghans now find themselves caught in a very difficult situation. On one side is Pakistan, which doesn't want them anymore in their territory. And on the other side is Afghanistan, which considers them traitor for abandoning their home in order to seek better life elsewhere. Here is our special report. At the Turkham border crossing between Pakistan and Afghanistan, thousands of Afghan refugees stand in line, carrying their entire lives in bags, uncertain of their fate in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. They had left their homeland when conditions deteriorated and the prospects of a good life there seemed bleak. The Pakistan-Taliban relations already strained due to a series of terror attacks attributed to the Tehrike Taliban Pakistan have worsened. Pakistan has announced a crackdown on illegal immigrants with a deadline for departure is set for November 1. This ultimatum leaves the Afghan community, which has been contributing to Pakistan's economy for years, facing a dire threat to their survival. Hamidullah, an immigrant and trader in Pakistan, voices his concerns emphasizing the contributions of immigrants to Pakistan's economy. He pleads with the government not to harass immigrants as many of them are significant contributors to the country's revenue. Afghan Majreen so khud tang kar raha hai wo sarkar e khama kha abhi dekho 30 saal se ziyad kam bish hum log idhar kaam karta hai na alhamdulillah abhi baluchistan hum log koi bhi taklif nahi de abhi khama kha lo kuch taklif hota hai लेकिन इस जगह के हम किराए पर एक लग पंद्रह हजार एक लग उन्नीस हजार रुपए जो हम लोग जाए वाला के कि दस हजार भी कोई भी नहीं ले सकता है किराए पर हर दुकान में अनुवाद चीजें लेकिन कारोबार अभी बहुत डिम हो गया ये माजर के वजह से वो कुमार सिंह दरखास्त है कि माजर के इतने ज्यादा तकलीफ नहीं देवे माजर भी the Taliban, now in control of Afghanistan, has swiftly denied Pakistan's accusations of Afghan citizens being responsible for terror attacks. They find Pakistan's move to deport Afghan immigrants unacceptable and suggest tolerating them as long as they do not leave Pakistan voluntarily. However, thousands of immigrant Afghans find themselves stranded at border crossings, moving from Pakistan, a country they sought refuge in during times of danger to Afghanistan, where they are now seen as traitors. Pakistan grappling with its own economic challenges, inflation, poverty and protests is addressing its migrant issue without considering the Afghan lives at stake. Mohammad Ismail, an illegal Afghan refugee returning to Afghanistan, shared the hardships faced by his family and others stranded at the border. They have been sleeping on footpaths with their children, lacking money for food and are struggling to make ends meet. दस दिन से इधर हम रह रहे तोरखान बॉर्डर में मुश्किलात इतने हैं कि फैमिली के रेश के लिए जगह नहीं है ठीक है उठले सारे बंद थे अभी जो आज जो है ना बॉर्डर कुला हुए हैं तो अभी जो है ना उठले कुले सिदर गोटपाल पे हम बच्चों के साथ सोते होते हैं ठीक है अभी काने के लिए हमारे पास पैसे नहीं है किसी टाइम भी जो ना उधर 
किधर से मैं इनको कलाऊ जब मैं पैसे जब नहीं हो तो कहा ना किधर से कलाऊ मैं अफगानिस्तान से आया था जब अफगानिस्तान में हालात बहुत खराब थे मैं आया था पिंडी में रहने के लिए उधर रह रहा था तकरीबन तीन चार साल से रह रहा हूँ अभी उधर को उन्होंने हालात इतना खराब किया हुआ को बोलते हैं कि यार एक दो हफ्तों में आप लोग जो है ना इधर से पार्सल हो जाए अपने गाँव में चले जाए अफगानिस्तान This situation has put the lives of thousands of Afghan immigrants at risk, hoping for better prospects in Afghanistan, a place many of them and their children had never seen. The tug of war between two governments now hangs as a deciding factor for the future of over a million Afghans who have their lives packed in bags, supporting each other as they face an uncertain journey ahead. In this spotlight once more the distressing issue of enforced disappearances in Balochistan has garnered widespread attention sparking impassioned calls for accountability and justice from human rights organizations and activists the conflict between baloch groups and pakistani security forces continues unabated driven by the pursuit of ethnic baloch autonomy or even complete independence from islamabad's governance The civilian populace bears the brunt of the protracted strife, enduring illegal detentions and extrajudicial killings at the hands of military, police, and paramilitary personnel. These grave concerns took center stage during the 54th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, as Baloch political activists shed light on the pressing crisis of enforced disappearances within Pakistan's Balochistan. Let's delve into this. Balochistan, a region plagued by a history of serious human rights violations, has witnessed the unexplained disappearance of numerous individuals, often under mysterious circumstances. This issue of enforced disappearance in Balochistan has once again taken center stage, with human rights organizations and activists demanding accountability and justice for the victims. This concern was prominently addressed during the 54th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council where Baloch political activists brought attention to the critical matter of enforced disappearances in Pakistan's Balochistan. Munir Mengal, the president of the Baloch Voice Association, shed light on the enforced disappearances in Balochistan and raised questions about the Pakistan government's violation of fundamental rights and freedoms I want to draw UN bodies and mechanisms attention to the alarming issue of enforced disappearances in Balochistan Pakistan enforced disappearances are a deeply concerning and inhumane practice that has been going on in Balochistan for far too long thousands of innocent people have vanished without a trace their whereabouts unknown and their families left in anguish and uncertainty the issue not only violates the most basic human rights but also undermines the principle of justice and accountability that the united nation stands for on in august 2023 the voice for bloch missing persons documented verified cases of 56 cases of enforced disappearances including two women and 26 students the united nations bodies shall take effective measures to save the lives of those who are who have fallen victim to enforced disappearances in Balochistan Balochistan's history has been characterized by recurrent insurgencies following Pakistan's annexation of the autonomous Baloch state of Kalat in 1948 Baloch groups have consistently clashed with Pakistani security forces seeking their rights autonomy for ethnic Baloch regions or complete independence from Islamabad's control Civilians have endured great suffering due to these conflicts facing unlawful detentions and extrajudicial killings by military police and paramilitary personnel Thousands of Baloch individuals have been abducted and gone missing since the region's illegal occupation with hundreds falling to Pakistan's kill and dump policy a tool used by the Pakistani state to suppress the oppressed people of the impoverished province Global media outlets have repeatedly reported the discovery of numerous bodies suspected to be armed terrorists and political activists in Balochistan province pointing to extrajudicial killings by Pakistani security forces 
According to a recent report by the Human Rights Department of the Baloch National Movement, known as PAK, there were 31 reported cases of torture, 32 enforced disappearances and three extrajudicial killings in April of this year alone. The families of the disappeared individuals suffer considerable harm living in constant uncertainty about the fate and whereabouts of their loved ones. मैं भी एक विक्टिम हूं टॉर्चर विक्टिम हूं पाकिस्तान के जो हैं टॉर्चर सेल्स में रहा हूं तो वहां पर स्कूलों से हमें उठाया जाता है वहां पर हमें कॉलेजेस से उठाया जाता है बेसिकली वहां पर ओपिनियन एक्सप्रेस करने नहीं देते लोगों को आपकी एक ओपिनियन होती है जो एस्टेब्लिशमेंट के खिलाफ होती है जो कि रियासत के खिलाफ होती है और फौज के खिलाफ होती है जब आप किसी चीज पर बात करना चाहें कि बलूचिस्तान में यह मसले हो रहे हैं तो वो आपको बात करने नहीं देंगे वो आपको उठाएंगे आपको गायब कर देंगे आपको टॉर्चर करेंगे आ, कुछ ऐसे भी हमारे कोलीग्स हैं बहुत सारे ऐसे यंगस्टर्स हैं जिनको जिनकी लाशें फेंक दी जा चुकी हैं और ऐसे बहुत से यंगस्टर्स हैं जो कि अभी तक गायब हैं 14 14 15 15 सालों तक यंगस्टर्स को जो है उठाया जाता है उसके बाद आ, मतलब उनकी दाढ़ियां सफेद हो जाती हैं किसी को खुशकिस्मती से छोड़ दिया जाता है किसी को कत्ल कर कर फेंक दिया जाता है बलूचिस्तान में एक तो यह है कि वहां पर आ, एजुकेशन हासिल करना इतना मुमकिन नहीं होता वहां पर इंस्टीट्यूट्स नहीं हैं एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस नहीं हैं तो जब बाहर जाते हैं पाकिस्तान के शहरों में जाते हैं पढ़ने के लिए वहां पर उनकी प्रोफाइलिंग होती है बाकायदा टीचर्स भी इन्वॉल्व होते हैं उनके एब्डक्शंस में उनके इंफॉर्मेशन जो है रियासत को दे, देने में Activists also raised concerns about the impact of the China-Pakistan economic corridor on the lives of people in Balochistan. Various projects including mining and energy initiatives have disproportionately benefited external parties while depriving local residents of resources and employment opportunities. Abhi bhi Balochistan mein ह्यूमन राइट्स जो वायलेशन है इसके अलावा जो वहाँ पे सोशो इकोनॉमिकल इश्यूज है वो भी अपने पीक पर है चाइना इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर के नाम पे एक बहुत बड़ा वहाँ पे प्रोजेक्ट चल रहा है लेकिन वहाँ पे जो बलोच नेटिव्स हैं उनको कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है बड़े मल्टीनेशनल कंपनीज हैं उनकी सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज़ है वो उनको भी पूरा नहीं कर रहे तो जो एक मल्टी ट्रिलियन वहाँ पे एक प्रोजेक्ट है वहाँ से उसके बासी जो नज़दीक के लोग हैं उनको कोई फ़ायदा नहीं पहुँचता तो बलोचिस्तान दूर की बात है और गवर्नमेंट ये सारी चीज़ें सिस्टमेटिकली कर रहा है ताकि बलोच डिप्राइव रहे दीज ग्रेवियंसेज हैव इग्नाइटेड प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट टारगेटेड किलिंग्स एंड स्टेज एनकाउंटर्स बोथ विद इन बलोचिस्तान एंड इन वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज demonstrators holding banners and placards while chanting slogans against the inhuman atrocities in Pakistan have called upon the international community to condemn the ongoing genocide as the world silence only emboldens Pakistan Now turning our attention to Jammu and Kashmir in India where terrorists supported by Pakistan are attempting to destabilize the peace and create chaos in the Union territory. Nevertheless, the Indian Army, in cooperation with the Jammu and Kashmir police, is actively countering these terrorists dedicated to maintaining peace and harmony in the region. In the most recent operation, security forces successfully eliminated two Lashkar terrorists in the Shopia district of Jammu and Kashmir. A report. On October 10, a fierce encounter erupted between security forces and terrorists in the Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir. This skirmish was instigated following the receipt of intelligence reports indicating the presence of terrorists in the vicinity. Swiftly, the combined team of the Indian Army and local law enforcement cordoned off the area. As the hidden terrorists opened fire, an immediate response was triggered. In a meticulously executed operation, two members of the proscribed terror organization Lashkar-e-Taiba were successfully neutralized. 
The individuals who met their fate have been identified as Morifat Makbul and Jazim Farooq. Police records affirm the involvement of one of the terrorists, Jazim Farooq, in the heinous murder of Kashmiri Pandit Sanjay Sharma, which occurred in February outside his residence in the Achan area of Pulwama. सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस को खबर मिली थी कि दो टेररिस्ट अलशीपुरा में देखे गए हैं तो इस खबर पे जेकेपी पुलिस और 44 आरआर और 178 सीआरपीएफ की जॉइंट फोर्सेस ने कोऑर्डिनेट किया था और रात में अराउंड एक बजे के अराउंड हमारे स्पेक्ट फोर्सेस के ऊपर फायर किया टेररिस्ट लोगों ने रात भर ही ऑपरेशन चला है और सुबह सात बजे के अराउंड दो टेररिस्ट दोनों लोकल हैं शोपिया के मारिफत मगलू जो कि चैगुन का रहने वाला है और जाजिम फारुक जो शिरमाल का रहने वाला है ये दोनों इस ऑपरेशन में न्यूट्रलाइज A large number of terrorists with backing from Pakistan remained concealed within Jammu and Kashmir, persistently seeking opportunities to execute acts of terror and disrupt the peace within the region. Nevertheless, despite the malicious intent of Pakistan-based terrorists, counter-terrorism operations have been remarkably successful in quashing terrorism in JNK. Last month, security forces eliminated Lashkar's commander Uzair Khan, a key figure responsible for a horrific attack on a joint team of JNK police and the army in Gadol village. This attack resulted in the tragic loss of two esteemed army officers and a valiant JNK police officer. Many experts are of the opinion that these operations have left anti-social elements in the region feeling powerless as their logistical and financial support networks face heightened scrutiny. Pakistan's persistent efforts to disrupt India's peace are nothing new. The efforts of the Indian security forces have been very successful and this is seen by the statistics which clearly prove that from 2018 to 2022 the number of terrorist incidents have reduced drastically leading to a drop in the killings of civilians by the terrorists. Thus all the measures taken by the Indian security forces are bearing fruit and the major achievement has come after Article 370 and 35A were removed from Jammu and Kashmir in August 2019. In response to these relentless attempts to disrupt peace in Jammu and Kashmir, India has put in place a meticulously designed framework that operates tirelessly to thwart individuals sent and supported by Pakistan. This comprehensive framework operates on multiple fronts. India's Border Security Force intercepts drones engaged in the transport of drugs and ammunition to Indian soil, while raids conducted by the National Investigation Agency disrupt the financial networks supporting terrorists within India. Moreover, India's deeply entrenched intelligence network supplies vital information that informs ground-level counter-terrorism operations carried out by the police and the army, thereby ensuring the maintenance of peace in the Union territory, despite Pakistan's repeated nefarious endeavors. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.